All right, welcome back to Rise and Shine. When it comes to uh, technology and the developments that take place in technology, I think the most important benefit of technology is that it empowers people. It makes people do. It makes people creative. It makes people to become innovators. And we have a great personality, an innovator, a researcher together with us today. Mm -hmm. And good morning to you. He is Chamira Pratsad Rajasinghe. Good morning, And he is a serial entrepreneur, an innovator, and an avid programmer. Well, he made his uh, humble entrance uh, to information technology and the developments uh, and into the program arena by compiling GW basic code snippets. So this is where he started. A long journey starts with a single step and uh, with his ample hard work and commitment and self-studies, he paved his path uh, to master Visual Basic 6.0 and he is presently the CEO of Arima Lanka. Good morning to you once again. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so research carried out in the field of IT and uh, human computer interaction takes place between uh, the technology and when it comes to computers and this is all what technology is about exactly. today. So why do you think about game development playing a role in human computer interaction? Yeah good question Budima. Basically like uh, whenever we are baking a game we need to understand uh, what exactly our game players or the users need. So in, uh, in order to understand that, uh, we can utilize HCI design principles. So HCI is all about an intersection of psychology uh, and computer mechanics and other behavioral sciences and there's a kind of lot of modulation. Mm -hmm. So by utilizing those principles, uh, we can improve our game designs and also in the meantime, when, uh, when discussing about the development, HCI allows us to uh, uh, develop games in multiple interfaces. Mm -hmm. Like gamers can play the games in different different interfaces. Mm -hmm. So uh, those are the points that we can utilize from HCI in order to design and develop games. Mm -hmm. So right, and then that, which means that. Uh, Nowadays, people are more prone to uh, like selecting the most easiest one because that's the most natural one when it comes to gameplay. Exactly. That makes you, you know, makes you play like you are in real life. Exactly. So, throwing you the next question here. Yeah. So, what's hap what has your role been in uh, HCI? Because, you know, I think you know a lot about HCI and, you know, you just defined HCI. So, I just want to know, what has your, you know, role been in the field of HCI, HCI you know? Yeah. Um, I started uh, reading about uh, human computer interaction in the year 2008. Okay. So it was like IoT these days, Internet of Things. A lot of people are discussing about IoT, big data, mm -hmm. and how cloud computing can integrate with all these technologies. So back at that era, like uh, seven years back, uh, HCI was a very new uh, technology for us. So there was lack of resources to read about. So we wrote to uh, foreign professors and we collaborated with different uh, foreign um, and online mm -hmm. user groups like natural user groups. So then after we understand, we, we understood about HCI related concepts. So uh, I started with um, multi-touch computing mm -hmm. uh, where people can interact with uh, surfaces and uh, the surfaces itself is cognitive enough to identify different objects. So that's uh, one area that I have uh, learned on HCI. Mm -hmm. Then uh, gesture-based computing, uh, how depth sensing cameras can utilize in order to track and uh, understand the three-dimensional gestures we are doing open air. Uh, then uh, my favorite part is brain-computer interface, how brain uh, brain commands can communicate with computers and getting a thing done really? without any input so those are the main uh, fields i have learned and researched on uh, in the field of hci so just let, let me just go into detail on that now you said you said brain computer right so which means like you can just you know think okay run and the person runs the sort of yeah wow yeah 
That's, great. That's what technology is about. So exactly. getting back into Chamira. Uh, so when you talk about the projects that you're involved in, most importantly you said uh, human-computer interaction and when it comes to game development, yeah. they do play uh, an important role yeah. and they go hand in hand always. It's, it's all about the way that uh, humans interact with this technology that's coming up and developing. So yeah. let's talk about the projects that you're mainly involved in. Okay. Um, in year 2008, uh, we did a project called Project Kadapata. So Project Kadapata is all about a surface uh, which 10 people can simultaneously access the table so it uh, cumulatively uh, uh, accessible enough to get 100 touch uh, points and in the meantime it cognitively identifies uh, different objects uh, which, were, which, are, which, which we are putting on top of the table. So. Uh, the surface itself identifies the size of the object, color, and what exactly the type of that object. So if we put a phone, we can identify what exactly the phone we placed, what is the model, mm -hmm. and so and so on. So that's like uh, seven years back. Right. Uh, then after, uh, I hope, into uh, uh, gesture-based computing. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys know Kinect, right? Myself, Kinect. Kinect. Uh, yes, it's it's, it's widely being used now. Exactly, yeah. So it's a depth sensing camera and we wanted to play with that. So uh, we played with it and we developed games uh, where we can play only using your gestures without using That's mouse, right. keyboards, any other equipment. We just play games via gestures. Mm -hmm. Then my favorite part is brain computer interface. Um, uh, with the uh, technologies of brain computer interfacing, <coughs> we invented a project called Project Kadapata. Mm -hmm. Project, uh, sorry, Project Kundalini. Mm -hmm. So Project Kundalini is all about uh, EEG acquiring headset where we acquire EEG, electroencephalogram, mm -hmm. and we are pre-processing those EEG and extracting the certain features of it. Mm -hmm. Then we are understanding the certain psychological state of humans and the commands that they are given to the computer. Mm -hmm. They are not uh, directional data, but it's a Boolean data. So oh. for an instant, uh, Varuna, mm -hmm. if you need to uh, turn off a bulb okay. or if you need to turn off a camera, uh, you just need to think about that. So mm -hmm. our machine learning algorithms itself identifying that command and executing that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one part of Project Kundalini. Mm -hmm. <coughs> then uh, we understood that we need to move on to uh, the field of maternity. Mm -hmm. So we did a project called Project Amma where uh, we understand, our engine itself understand uh, the stress level okay. of pregnant mothers mm -hmm. in their prenatal and postnatal uh, levels. Mm -hmm. right. So there's a virtual body, mm -hmm. uh, that virtual body is cognitive enough to identify that stress level and he's pushing up different rich media based stress relieving mechanisms. Right, I think Chamir, uh, yeah. interrupting you, that is very important uh, yeah. in the present day scenario because uh, uh, people do uh, go through a very busy life schedule exactly. and stress management has become an important exactly. uh, thing that needs mm -hmm. to be addressed. Yeah, exactly. They are, we are not uh, talking about the depression, it's kind of a medical related thing, mm -hmm. but we are uh, addressing the general stress so we collaboratively done the research with NHL National Hospital Sri Lanka. So it's kind of a very interesting project that we have done. Mm -hmm. So which means that even if you're not pregnant, you can try it out. Definitely, <laughs> when you can try it out. <laughs> <laughs> right, so let me ask you one more question yes, here. Like, right. um, now, you said that there are so many uh, platforms you have to choose when you make a game, right? And there are like a huge fan base out there who are playing games. You know, it could be like three years old. It could be like go on until like you're 70 years old. Yeah. And so, what's the? How do you decide which game should be played on this platform, and you know which platform should be, to be to develop on uh, a certain game? Yeah, you're asking about the developers, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So uh, basically, uh, it's definitely based on the skill level. So uh, the game development is evolved uh, massively now. So even a designer mm -hmm. can make a game without knowing maths, programming knowledge, anything like that just uh, bragging and drop elements and you can publish a game. Mm -hmm. So the game development has come to that uh, extent. 
I think, Chamiya, yeah. uh, we can now visualize one of your products. Why don't we talk about it as well? Uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, here, uh, this is uh, what exactly we are doing at our office. So, you we do, games. yeah, we <laughs> make games and we play games. <laughs> we invent, uh, those are some games that we have done for mm. our clients. This is a gesture based game where you can play open air. Well, and true. this is the project Kundalini. Mm. When, we, when you are concentrating about uh, the trophy it's getting lifted up accordingly to your attention uh, for this project we have utilized a uh, neurosky headset right. mm. which is a commercially available headset and those are some games that we have done for our clients that's great wow. yeah it looks absolutely stunning actually you know yes thank you very much yeah it's really good <laughs> so going back to the uh, uh, features that we need to uh, mm -hmm. evaluate when developing games yes a skill is the most important thing and also we need to understand if we are making a game to a client that we need to understand what his exactly the requirement is what are the platforms that he needs his game on and then the timeline mm -hmm. so if we have a good timeline we can even go to low level and do a good product mm -hmm. or else we can utilize the existing tools, tools uh -huh. and then uh, we can uh, develop games so it's based on different different factors actually mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Chamira, and uh, alongside that, I'd like to ask you, have you ever really had to uh, take a look at a feature that you really, really wanted to integrate uh, in your game that you wanted to develop uh, when it <laughs> comes to the cost factor? Uh, not really uh, for the cost factor. So we started Arimac uh, with only one vision. We are not chasing uh, numbers, money not like that mm -hmm. we are just chasing the passion and we have our awesome quality mm -hmm. so but you're right like we because uh, we as a boutique startup we can't have only our products so we need to uh, do games for our clients as well so far we have done more than 75 plus games for clients around the globe so whenever we have a brief we are like visualizing if uh, like if we can have this feature into the game, it would be super cool. But when we are talking with the client, but it, but the client is very specific about his uh, requirement. Absolutely. So unfortunately, we might need to pull the, pull our vision from that game out. So yeah, it more happens. than seventy five, more than seventy five plus times, uh, we wanted to uh, remove most most of the features, features we wanted right. to have. Yeah. That is, that is all uh, when it comes to uh, uh, the development. Finally, when it comes to uh, the development that reaches the customer, these things really happen and you need to exactly. take them into account. Uh, so we have another interesting trailer to uh, bring into your vision uh, about uh, what uh, Chamira is going to launch very soon uh, in terms of a game that he has produced. Let's take a look at this and we'll talk about it when we come back. Adventures of yeah. TR, that is. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about it. Okay, <laughs> uh, Adventures of TR is our flagship product that we're going to launch after three years of hard work. Mm -hmm. So that will be our first game uh, which we are releasing 
to the globe in a very massive scale. All right. So Tia is a uh, Tia is the girlfriend of our lead 3D uh, animator. So okay. he uh, modeled and he illustrates and he really loves Tia. So all the team um, loves Tia and uh, the Tia will be a really good game, mm -hmm. which will be releasing. Um, That's pretty interesting. Yeah, <laughs> releasing very soon. But uh, at the moment we are having discussion with multiple publishers. So. Mm -hmm. all right. Definitely you can play the game in next few months for sure. Okay, those little kids who are waiting out yes, there, not only exactly. the little ones, I think. Uh, yeah. uh, anyone, it's, it's just beyond age limits when it comes to gaming. All of us, we love it, isn't that so? So uh, you hand. can have your hands on Tia. And raise your hand if you're going to download that. Yes, <laughs> of course. Of course. Uh, uh, so uh, I would like to ask you, Chamira, when mm -hmm. it comes to uh, your life, I think you've uh, achieved a lot of awards uh, uh, being uh, the youth inventor um, in the year 2013 and uh, uh, getting the national awards of this nature. Uh, what do you think about it? Um, I'm quite happy about that. Yeah, I'm quite happy. Obviously, right? Obviously, that is, yeah. Because <laughs> we actually went through your uh, LinkedIn profile. We dug in some information about you and we have a list. I think we, do we have time to tell all this? <laughs> yes, and uh, finally, we would like to ask you, uh, Chamira, what is the message that you would like to give for the uh, young researchers, inventors who are coming up in game development yes. and who are coming up uh, in information technology, different fields and so on? What would be the last message as an innovator, as an inventor and a researcher in this field? Yeah, uh, good question, Budima. So uh, basically, whenever we start on something, we should not think about numbers. Definitely, mm -hmm. we should uh, we should follow our passion towards the technology we love, and we we have to understand our limits. We can do everything. Earlier, we did that mistake, so we wanted to do everything. But we are very streamlined now. We are doing certain products, and we are doing very certain uh, services in different areas we need. I mean, very specific areas. So, oh, f first of all, you need to understand what exactly your feasibility and your ability to deliver the product or services. If you promise something, you have to definitely deliver right. on time. So, we have uh, three core features that we are uh, thinking whenever we're starting a project like the quality, innovativeness, and punctuality. So, without those three things, we cannot ex exist or survive. Mm -hmm. So. And also, you have to uh, uh, pay gratitude right. to the people you uh, people help, and you have to share your knowledge with each other. Never compete with your competitors. Always share love and collaborate, and do something for your motherland. So that is things. very inspiring indeed, exactly. Chamira. Thank you very much uh, mm -hmm. for joining in Rise and Shine today. After yes. all, I think you need to do what you love and love exactly. what you do as exactly. well. And it is indeed a great inspiration. So we hope those game lovers uh, would definitely have a chance with what Chamira is going to release in a couple of weeks probably. And we will all be waiting for it. And thank you very much. Thank yes. you very much, Mr. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Well. Yeah, I think something to that, what you said, you know, if you just do something, rightly if you, if you just don't follow the numbers the numbers will follow you right exactly 100 <laughs> percent all right thank you so much and we will see you same time same place tomorrow mm -hmm. as well and with that good note we will see you tomorrow, tomorrow.